In this video, we will begin discussion of improper integrals and how to evaluate them. We'll specifically go through some examples. The definite integrals with which we have worked have all been integrals of function with finite domains, or have finite ranges, or have been bounded. There are cases in which we must integrate over an infinite interval. So for example, I might have y equals f of x, and I want to integrate from a to infinity of f of x dx, which could be interpreted as the area under this curve from a to infinity. Or maybe I want to integrate a function which tends toward infinity near a given input value. For example, suppose this is my function y equals g of x, and I want to integrate from d to e of g of x dx, which could be interpreted as the area under the curve on this interval. In this video, we will address how to handle these definite integrals using limits and determine if they converge to a finite value or if the definite integral diverges. A definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is improper if a is negative infinity or b is positive infinity or both or there is a value c with c between a and b at which f of c is not defined and f of c gives an infinite discontinuity. In the first case, we have a type 1 improper integral. In the second case, we have a type 2 improper integrals. In this video, we will discuss how to handle both using limits. Improper integrals of the first kind occur when 1, infinity or negative infinity or both are limits of integration and 2, the integrand f of x is continuous on the interval of integration. We see there are three types of type 1 improper integrals. The first kind, we integrate from d to infinity of f of x dx. The second, we integrate from negative infinity to e of f of x dx. And in the third case, we have both a negative infinity and infinity as the limits of integration. Let's discuss how to handle these. In the first case, we treat the integral from d to infinity of f of x dx as the limit of the integral from d to b of f of x dx and consider what happens as b goes to infinity. In the second case, we consider the definite integral from a to e of f of x dx and consider what happens to the definite integral as a goes to negative infinity. In these two cases, we follow these steps. We first express the improper integral as a limit. We evaluate the definite integral using the finite limits of integration. We evaluate the limit. If the limit exists and is finite, we say that the improper integral converges and the limit is the value of the improper integral. If the limit fails to exist, then the improper integral diverges. In this third case, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx, I would use my properties of integration to express the improper integral as the integral from negative infinity to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to infinity of f of x dx, and then I would proceed with how to handle these two improper integrals by expressing each as limits, and then I would proceed with steps one through four. If either or both of these limits do not equal a finite value, then we say that the sum diverges. So suppose we have these three examples. We'll go through the first and the third case, and I'll let you go through the middle case on your own. Let's consider the integral from 2 to infinity of e to the 3 over x all over x squared dx. If we consider a graph of this function, I see that the function asymptotically approaches y equals 0 as x tends towards infinity. I'm going to first begin with the definition of an improper integral, and I'm going to set up the integral from 2 to b of e to the 3 over x all over x squared dx and consider what happens to that definite integral as b goes to infinity. In other words, I'm looking at the area under the curve from 2 to some value b, and I'm going to consider what happens to that b as b goes to infinity. In order to evaluate this integral, I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to let u equal 3 over x. The derivative of u with respect to x is a negative 3 over x squared. And solving for 1 over x squared dx, I make the substitution in the integrand 
and I've got the integral of negative one-third e to the u du, and changing the limits of integration, I'm integrating from 3 halves to 3 over b, and I take the limit of the definite integral as b goes to infinity. An antiderivative is negative one-third e to the u. I evaluate it at my endpoints. Knowing that b goes to infinity, e to the 3 over b will get close to e to the 0. And so therefore, this improper integral has a, takes a finite value of 1.16056. So the area under y equals 1 over x squared times e to the 3 over x on the half-closed interval from 2 to infinity is finite and equals 1.16056 square units. In other words, this improper integral converges to 1.16056. Let's consider another example. Let's look at the integral from negative infinity to infinity of r over the square root of r squared plus 9 dr. Our first step is that we must split the real number line at some value that we choose. In this case, let's let c equal 0. And so we will rewrite the improper integral as the sum of two improper integrals, namely the integral from negative infinity to 0 of r over the square root of r squared plus 9 dr plus the integral from 0 to infinity of r divided by the square root of r squared plus 9 dr. I will proceed by evaluating two separate limits. So I'll rewrite this as the limit as a goes to negative infinity of the integral from a to 0 of r divided by the square root of r squared plus 9 dr plus the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of r divided by the square root of r squared plus 9 dr. Again, I can proceed with substitution since I see that under the radical, if I let u equal r squared plus 9, I have a form of its derivative in the numerator. So I'll let u equal r squared plus 9. du will be 2r dr. Solving for r dr, I get 1 half du. I can make the substitution in each integral and change the limits of integration. Rewriting the integrand to be 1 half times u to the negative 1 half du. I integrate. I get the limit as a goes to negative infinity of u to the 1 half, evaluating from a squared plus 9 to 9, plus the limit as b goes to infinity of u to the 1 half, evaluating from 9 to b squared plus 9. I get the limit as a goes to negative infinity of 3 minus the square root of a squared plus 9, plus the limit as b goes to infinity of the square root of b squared plus 9 minus 3, and I get a negative infinity plus infinity. Given the list of steps that we had before, if either of these improper integrals diverge to either a positive or negative infinity, we say that the sum diverges. So therefore, since both improper integrals diverge, we say that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of r over the square root of r squared plus 9 dr diverges. Graphically, this integral, we're looking at the area between the curve and the x-axis from negative infinity to 0, and the integral from 0 to infinity looks at that region in yellow, both as a goes to negative infinity and b goes to positive infinity. This is an odd function, and normally on a symmetric finite interval, we say that an odd function has net area of 0. According to the definition of improper integral that we're using, this improper integral diverges. Let's consider improper integrals of the second kind, and these integrals occur when the function has an infinite discontinuity, specifically a vertical asymptote, at a limit of integration or at a point between the limits of integration. Suppose f is continuous on the half open interval from d to e and is discontinuous at d. Then the improper integral from d to e of f of x dx is equal to the limit as a gets close to d from the right of the definite integral from a to e of f of x dx. And we see that that definite integral can be represented as the area under the curve on that interval from a to e. Suppose f is continuous on the half-closed interval from d to e and discontinuous at e, then the integral then the improper integral from d to e of f of x dx is equal to the limit as b is close to e from the left of the integral from d to b of f of x dx. 
And again, in this case, we can graphically see that we're looking at the area in blue and considering what happens to that area as B gets closer and closer to E. These examples suggest that it's very important to draw sketches of the regions and to make sure that you're considering the limits properly as either from the left or from the right. Suppose f is discontinuous at a point c, where c is between d and e, and f is continuous on the half-closed interval from d to c, union the half-open interval from c to e. Then the integral from d to e of f of x dx is equal to the integral from d to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to e of f of x dx, which we rewrite as limits, specifically as the limit as b approaches c from the left of the integral from d to b of f of x dx plus the limit as a approaches c from the right of the integral from a to e of f of x dx. Let's consider an example. Determine whether the improper integral converges or diverges. If it converges, find its value. Let's look at the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x over the cube root of the cosine of x dx. This is an improper integral since the function has a vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2, the upper limit of integration. So we treat this using a limit, specifically the limit as b approaches pi over 2 from the left of the definite integral from 0 to b of the sine of x over the cube root of cosine of x dx. And we see it graphed here. We can proceed with substitution, specifically letting u equal the cosine of x. The derivative of u with respect to x is negative sine of x. Then replacing sine of x dx with negative du, we can rewrite the integral as negative 1 over u to the 1 third du. We change the limits of integration so that they're, they go from 1 to the cosine of b, and we take the limit of the definite integral as b approaches pi over 2 from the left. We get the limit as b gets close to pi over 2 from the left of the integral from 1 to the cosine of b of negative u to the negative 1 third power du. We integrate. We evaluate at our endpoints. We're looking at the limit as b goes to pi over 2 from the left of negative 3 halves times the cosine of b to the 2 thirds power minus 1. As b gets close to pi over 2 from the left, cosine of b gets close to 0. And we get that this improper integral converges to 3 halves. Let's review the important ideas from this video. First, there are two types of improper integrals. Type 1 improper integrals have one of infinity or negative infinity or both as limits of integration. Type 2 improper integrals have an infinite discontinuity at one of its limits of integration or has an infinite discontinuity contained in the interval given by the bounds of the integral. An improper integral is defined to be a limit and thus the improper integral's convergence to a value or divergence must be determined by evaluating a limit.